G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a quick, um, probably fun little video, um, which is based on a question I actually got asked by uh, someone the other day. Uh, they noticed I had AutoCAD in my ribbon on Windows, and they asked me, why do you still have AutoCAD when you use Revit? Um, it sort of reminded me, well, we actually do still have a lot of uses for this program. Um, so I thought I'd put together just a little list of reasons uh, why, as a BIM user, I still have a program that is arguably not a BIM program on my computer, and just some uses that we still have for it. Anyway, let's jump in. So I guess the first reason um, that I use AutoCAD for quite a lot is a lot of consultants in the industry are still using it. Um, there's a lot of engineers that will draft in 2D, especially when you're not on those higher budget projects, and maybe you're not going to get those A-grade consultants that are giving you the 3D models. Even if the architect is in BIM, it doesn't mean that everyone else is. Maybe the architect's not in BIM, maybe the structural engineer is. It's, you get all sorts of combinations of software on projects and no matter how hard you try, you're always gonna need at least a few people to be working in 2D. Even on the really high tier BIM projects, it's very rare that your civil engineers, your landscape architects, and sometimes some of your specialist consultants will be working in a BIM or 3D environment. So in this case, it can be really useful to have AutoCAD on your computer so that you can actually look at the files that are being sent to you before you go and dump them into your Revit models. Um, often when you load in files into Revit that are CAD files, they can really mess up your model if you're not careful. And sometimes they do need a little bit of cleaning up. Maybe you've got to take the title block off that the, the consultant has so kindly left on for you. Um, these things do happen quite a lot. Maybe you've got a set of plans that are still laid out with the four-way elevation sheet. You know, thanks, but it happens. Um, and it can be frustrating, but having AutoCAD means that we still have the ability to intervene and also just to easily view these files as well. Another reason um, that I tend to have AutoCAD on my machine is because very often we're gonna be dealing with old projects. And often in like renovation projects, for example, you might get a set of as-built drawings it's very unlikely you'll get an as-built model. So most of those as-builts are probably gonna be either in DWG or DGN format, or maybe they're gonna be a musty old set of PDFs that you have to go and break apart in Illustrator, if you're lucky, or maybe just load them in and trace them, poor bugger. Um, so often it can be really helpful to have a CAD viewer, um, so AutoCAD for example, um, in order to view this information before we go and dump it into a model. Um, can still be very useful. Um, I find that, you know, I probably nearly all the time surveys as well, are being provided in this format. So you really do need it sometimes just to process these files, um, even if they're not necessarily consultants working on the job full time, um, that they still give you these types of files. So the third reason that I have AutoCAD um, on my computer is very similar to the same reason that I started using Rhino before I used Grasshopper. Um, these programs are actually very good at opening and passing through a lot of different file formats. This isn't really something that Revit's really well known for. Um, you can only import a few types of file formats into Revit and not usually easily as well. But if you're using something like AutoCAD, you can do things like link in things like SAT files or SAT files much more easily than you can in Revit. AutoCAD also supports things like uh, point cloud files as well, which can sometimes be easier to view in these types of environments uh, than are more capably handling uh, this type of file. I actually used it just the other day to process a Rhino Model 3 SAT into Revit um, in the process losing few, much fewer elements in the process than if I linked it straight into Revit itself. It does have its uses from time to time in this regard. Often uh, another thing that I use AutoCAD quite a lot is to use a really handy command called data extract. This actually allows you to take things like blocks and elements and points and go and extract really important data out of them, which we can use in programs like Dynamo. For example, maybe you've got a survey file and you wanna actually get the point at each survey marked height in a survey where they haven't actually elevated those points with a Z value when you're creating a topography. Well, using the data extract command, you can go and get that point and also the annotations number as two separate values. And then you can actually elevate those points either in a CAD file or build a topo surface using something like Dynamo. I've done this a few times for clients. It's a really handy workflow. Um, and in this situation, you'd really only be able to do it by either using uh, Dynamo to access the block data or in this case using data extract in AutoCAD, which is far more flexible. So definitely check out this command if you do have CAD on your machine, it can be really, really useful. Um, something that I use AutoCAD for a lot 
and I'm sure a lot of other people do if they use Revit, is just to clean up CAD files. My God, those things are a mess sometimes. If you get a survey from a consultant, chances are it's gonna be outside the comfort window that Revit has for how big a file is allowed to be before it truncates graphically. Um, so very often I'll use it just to move the survey closer to the origin. Um, whilst we do work with projects with a very far origin from an origin point in terms of the north, south, east, west value, it's very rare that we're going to do that in Revit itself because it just can't handle it. It's a silly limitation, but it is what it is. Um, there are workarounds for it, but usually I do need to go into CAD and clean that file up first. As well as this, I might be using things like the command overkill or flatten in order to clean up the file, make it lighter, delete layers that aren't relevant, turn them off. There's, there's all sorts of things you can do before you actually load that CAD file into Revit itself. Um, so it's a really helpful in-between program for just cleaning up files as well. As well as this, um, it's very rare that clients will actually want a BIM model handed over to them. Often they'll be asking for DWGs, and whilst DWGs can be generated via Revit, they're not always going to generate it in exactly the way you need it to be done. For example, sometimes if you're working with someone like the transport body in the city of Sydney, often they'll require things to be on very specific layer names in the CAD file. Revit can do some custom layer naming, but not everything that you'll need. So sometimes you might have to go in at the very end of a job and run some lisp routines or something similar across those CAD files in AutoCAD in order to hand over valid uh, DWG files for those clients. Now I am seeing less clients asking for this on handover. A lot of the time they just want a set of PDFs and a model. Um, but often on the bigger governmental sort of projects, um, you will see a requirement for DWG files. And you're really just taking a huge risk if you export DWG without actually going and processing that file or just reviewing the output. And without um, AutoCAD or a similar program, you can't actually go and verify that the output even worked. So it's very useful when, when DWG or CAD is actually a requirement on the project. So now we get to some of the more fun reasons or jokey reasons of why often we need AutoCAD in an office. Um, one reason is because a lot of those technical details that were done, say, 10 years ago on projects were done in AutoCAD and they were laid out in a way that wouldn't just be linkable into another file. So you might have things like blocks that you actually need to go and move around and do things to before you load them into a BIM environment. There's a lot of things that companies use. You've got to remember that AutoCAD was essentially like BIM, say 15, 20 years ago. It was being used by a majority of companies and they were putting a lot of work into their systems. And often when we're working with our BIM models, we're gonna to need to go and draw on old things that we used to use as a company. So I found that AutoCAD really still is essential because companies have a lot of legacy data left behind that really is most easily accessed in AutoCAD itself. So there is a bit of redundancy in this reason, but um, I found that most companies I work at do have the time to time need to actually go and access uh, old CAD files in AutoCAD itself. So one really fun reason that I actually keep AutoCAD around for is if I have a client or I'm working with someone who actually says that BIM is a problem, it wastes heaps of time, it doesn't work, yada, 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 negative, negative, negative. All you've got to do is open AutoCAD and start setting up a drawing to show them actually how much better it was in certain situations. Once I just opened up AutoCAD, and I asked the client to point to me where the section tool was. How do you create a section? Um, and after looking around for a little bit, they realized that we used to actually just draw them manually. Um, does anyone remember that amazing drawing technique we used to use where we put the floor plan in the middle and draw all the lines across it to line up everything on the sections and the elevations? God, it was rubbish. Um, if anyone's still doing that, I feel really bad for you because in BIM platforms, we just draw a section, a section line and bang, you've got a view. Um, sometimes this can be a really easy selling point if you're trying to explain BIM to someone, just drawing a section through a model and going to it um, is usually an instant sell if people don't understand BIM at all. Um, so often I will keep AutoCAD around just so I can compare it uh, to show people that aren't sold, I guess. And probably the last thing that I sort of have AutoCAD around for still is just to remind not only myself, but other people that I show things on a computer, how damn lucky we have it now. <laughs> you know, BIM platforms spoil us for choice. Having 3D available all the time is just such a blessing. Um, I used to work with AutoCAD at university, and if you wanted a 3D, you had to jump into something like 3ds Max, set up your model, it was uncoordinated from the CAD files altogether. You were basically just pulling extrusions out of a CAD file. It was just, it was rubbish. Like 3ds Max itself was a good program, but my God, CAD to Max, so much work involved. If you're using a BIM platform, you're doing both things at once. You're setting up a 3D model that can be just polished off for a render at the end. Uh, back in the day, if you wanted a render, you were handballing that thing off to India to get, just get an affordable rate. Um, that or you were like, you know, paying out the wazoo for a graduate that knew how to use 3ds Max. 
and any of them that knew what they were worth were charging for it, <laughs> put it that way. Nowadays it's such a commonplace thing, but um, it's amazing just how having a BIM or 3D application available all the time has really changed that culture. So I just use it to remind people um, that, you know, we do have a pretty lucky now. Whilst we do, you know, have lots of problems with our software still, it's not perfect. Um, it really does spoil us. So that's probably the last reason I like to keep it around for. Having said that, and it's not a reason for me, um, I know a lot of people out there are still using AutoCAD as their primary authoring application. It probably works for them and, and that's great. Um, if AutoCAD works for you, cool. Um, if you're the only person in the company using it, uh, maybe start reassessing your position. But um, for the most part, you know, it, it's still a program that does a lot of work for a lot of sectors and a lot of people and sometimes entire companies. So I don't want to knock it as a program, but I guess I just wanted to explain some things I still use it for, just for people that maybe don't realize that there's still some use left in the old beast. Anyway, hopefully that was enjoyable. Um, I enjoyed putting it together. Uh, but if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to. And I look forward to seeing you, seeing you in future similar videos um, as well as some of my tutorials. Anyway, thanks. Take care. Bye.